Drafting with Newmont. Here we are with another Vintage Cube Draft Arena. And uh, yeah, let's just jump right in. What kind of pack do we have? What kind of cards do we see here? Mox Diamond, Yagmas Will, Mystic Confluence, probably my top cards. Um, I know if I take Yagmas Will and Force Storm, people that yell at me in the comments, but Storm's pretty fun. You can't disagree. And Yagmas Will is basically easy mode for a storm. Um, but that being said, I think Mox Diamond could just be the best card in this pack. The card is just so, so powerful and, uh, well, you can play it in any archetype or any strategy. So I don't mind first picking the Mox Diamond here and, uh, seeing where we go from there. Ooh, okay. Now we have some options. We have Rafelos, we have Splinter Twin, there's Animate Dead, Basalt Monolith, Eidolon, Cryptic, Brazen Borrower's even good. Um, I haven't been a big fan of the Splinter Twin Kiki Jiki decks in this cube. I just, it hasn't felt like they are powerful enough slash um, get there enough of the time. So, don't think I'm going to take the twin. Rafelos is a tried and true measure for me, but maybe I'll try something different here. Uh, after taking first pick Mox Diamond, I'm just going to try and take the Basalt Monolith and stay open. Both of these cards lend themselves to a... Well, okay. Um, I was going to I was gonna say I'm going to try something different, but again, Channel is just way too good, and uh, there's no way I'm passing it here. Obviously, passing Rafelos and then getting Channel is slightly awkward, but I'm not going to pass it here. Even if I don't get very much other green... Uh, I think, again, it's just way too powerful to, to to turn a blind eye to. And now we can just pick up the channel into Ulamog. There's a library here, which I think is also one of the best green cards, but this it's hard. It's too hard to pass this up now. Like, we can go turn one Mox Diamond channel Ulamog. Is that good? Seems good to me. <sighs> I mean, I feel bad. We're drafting, like, the same deck week after week after week, but... It's just, it's so broken. Like, all of the cards I have right now, especially Channel, just do everything you want to. So let's take the Birds of Paradise now, passing Taiga, Slime, Terastodon. But what we're doing here is building redundancy, right? Building ways that we can make sure that we get two green early on in the game so that we can um, maximize our Channel. Because Channel later in the game, presumably you've taken some damage, you know, you can't cast it for nearly as much, but on turn two, on turn three, you can probably fire off a pretty easy channel, no problem. I still stand, beside the, uh, stand behind the Basalt Monolith pick. Um, I think you could have taken the Rafelos there. I was trying to do something different, but lo and behold, channel is king. And let's see. Now we're taking a look at something like Imperial Seal, which is just a tutor effect. Thirst for Knowledge, good card draw. Don't think Regrowth is necessarily what we want right now. Um, there's like a Goblin Welder I could take, and we can still do some weird artifact shenanigans with Channel in our deck. None of these lands are very tempting to, to me. Maybe Caracas. But I think I probably go with the Thirst for Knowledge here. Just card draw. More ways to find um, our relevant cards, our important cards. Yeah, good start. Very pleased. It'll be interesting if I wheel that Yagmas will, though, because we could do some weird channel deck with, uh, like, Mana Dorks. Sorry, weird storm deck with. Uh, channel and mana dorks. But we'll have to see. <sighs> Looks like there's a buildup of some packs here, people slow picking. These guys are already on pick 10, pick 5 over here. <laughs> Person passing to me. Okay, the pick number, what is this? Pick number seven, and we have a really solid pack again here. 
Finhorn Elves, Fiery Confluence, Wheel of Fortune, and Emrakul the Promised End. Wow, wow, wow. Normally I would just take the Fintorn Elves here, but I think Emrakul is just a really solid card um, to have access to. Because even if you don't channel into it, casting it later in the game is still very, very good. I think I'm most, pad uh, most sad about passing the Wheel of Fortune over the Fintorn Elves, but that's fine. Take the Avacyn's Pilgrim here. Obviously not as good as, you know, a, a, a creature, a mana dork that produces green, but uh, this is more for signaling purposes anyway, so it seems fine to take it. Wield the Elvish Mystic. This is pick nine. Okay. I mean, in theory, I could see Rafelos wheeling and get it next pack, but that would be absurdity. Yeah. So somebody did take the Rafelos, so I'm not going to get my hopes up. Um, we might not see too much green in the next pack. Beast Within is a fine green removal spell, but given the fact that I already have three one-drop mana dorks, I think Sword is pretty good here. It's not the I most ideal Sword. I think um, like Sword of Body and Mind and Sword of Fire and Ice even are better than Sword of Feast and Famine, but it's still nice ha to have access to. And now we can take like Edric, Rafelos, Heartbeat, even Vraska, all fine pickups here. I think Garrick has the highest upside. Um, Edric is nice, but I might not even be playing blue, and Garrick's a really good sideboard card versus opposing, like, mana dork decks. Very late Toxic. Let's take the Copper Line Gorge. Nice. Slime on the Wheel is excellent, although Ancient Grudge is very, very good, but Slime feels a really nice roll here. Another land. Oh, and Wheeling the Fiery Confluence is kind of crazy, I think, as well. Card's very good in this format. But, yeah, great pack one. Um... Have a Basalt Monolith instead of a Rafelos, but again, not too upset getting past that whatever pick three, pick four channel. And pack number two has some goodies for us as well. We have a Fast Bond, an Oko, a Ponder, a Venser. Probably going to just go ahead and take the Oko here. Um, Fast Bond really needs some other pieces to make work, and even though the card has a very high uh, potential, it uh, oftentimes just doesn't make the cut is not good enough i think oko is well we all know how oko is in these days um ponder i think another good pickup but let's just take the broken the broken three drop okay eternal witness is just okay right now we have a miscalc for some interaction primal command as a creature tutor some um dual lands don't know how badly i want to take the miscalc here Looks like we are moving into somewhat blue territory, so maybe it is better take uh, than taking like the tomb. But I can also see taking like the Umazawa's Jite. It's a card that can just swing a lot of matchups for sure. Um, obviously, if you're playing against like another creature deck, it can kind of just take over the game. So my choices here, I think, are the Jite or the Miscalc, and I'm gonna go with the Jite. I expect to pick up some more mana dorks. And uh, GTA is pretty nice on them. So interesting thing here, I don't actually like Blightsteel Colossus. I think it's one of the worst uh, win conditions to channel into. I think all of the Eldrazi, especially the Eldrazi with Annihilator, are much, much better. Um, and even though Blightsteel is still good, I don't think I want it here. I think I'm looking at like Sylvan Caryatid, Trigon Predator, and Brainstorm. I'm going to go with the Caryatid here. It's uh, good fixing, and even though it doesn't hold an attack with an equipment, it uh, it's going to do the job here. The only reason I would take the Blightsteel Colossus is because I do have some number of artifacts right now, and I think tinkering out a Blightsteel Colossus is very good, but Channel Blightsteel is, is a lot less um, thrilling, so go with the carry. Get a Misty Rainforest here pretty easily. That's a great pickup, obviously. Incubation Druid's okay, Savannah's okay, Survival, Snapcaster, Frantic Search, but very easy Misty Rainforest here for me, as we see a Mana Morphos, Den Protector, Crucible, and a Finale. Um, I mean, we've seen this all before, Channel Finale. I think that was my last week's draft video. Is uh, pretty good. Let's do it. Vivian Reed, Verdant Catacombs, Kadama's Reach going to be my pick. Obviously, Fetch here would be good as well. Although I don't have any real ways to abuse the fetches, right? I don't have top, I don't have courser, I don't have oracle, I don't have the sylvan library, but Kadama's Reach is ramp and it's fixing. So another pretty easy pickup here for me. Ooh, as we have time spiral, 
and Ulamog, and Atarka. So three very, very good pickups for this particular style of deck. Uh, I think the Ulamog is probably the best choice, as, well, it's pretty easy win con with channel, and at 10 mana is just castable, honestly. Nice pickup, as we get and harmonize here. Wasteland, Skull Clamp, Polychronos, all okay, but card draw is vital. High Tide not going to be good here. We'll take a sideboard Tristani. Primal Command on the wheel, very good. Sorry, Ewit. Yeah, I think I like this better. If I had uh, Time Walk or something, Ewit would be a higher consideration, but Primal Command buys you time or can deal with a pesky non-creature permanent of the opponents or can, you know, tutor uh, for one of your creatures. So I think this is a good place to be. Right now, the problem with this deck is that if I don't draw channel, um, it might have a hard time closing out the game. So, like, maybe I'd run the Garrick. Hopefully I find, what, something like an opposition in the last pack? I mean, we still have five more picks to go out of this third or second pack, but we still need to fill a few of the holes. Um that this deck has. Trigon Predator, pretty good. I'm not going to say it's amazing or anything, but this format does have a lot of artifacts and enchantments. And sometimes you, you play out of a Trigon Predator and your opponent just has a really hard time doing anything. Uh, Breeding Pool would be good. Tropical Island would be good. Lumbering Falls. Any other blue-green land I can think of, I guess, would be good. <sighs> so, let's see. Rafelos and Sylvan Library both gone, but we could get what? We could get Natural Order, um, Primeval Titan, both of those cards I have not seen yet, Oracle of Moldaya, Corsair of Crufix, also cards we have yet to see. Um, no power yet. We could open a power in the next pack. That would be great. I guess the best would probably be... Mm, probably Emerald. I think Emerald is probably better than Soul Ring right now. Uh, we didn't open any of those cards. What do we have? We have a Sheldock Isle, Garrick Wildspeaker, Gruel Signet, Arbor Elf. Do I have enough ways to really make the Sheldock Isle worthwhile? Because in these type of decks, Sheldock Isle has uh, really good potential, right? You have so many top end cards that it, you know, if you hide a, an Eldrazi with it, you can just win the game from there. But I, that might not be the pick right now. Like we have Harmonize, Draw Cards, Thirst for Knowledge, Kadama's Reach is a little bit of thinning. But I think here I might want to take like the Arbor Elf just for extra consistency. Either that or Garrick or something. I'm a big fan of fast mana, so it's either Arbor Elf or Garrick. And I'm just going to go with the one drop when in doubt. Okay, there's the natural order. Now, I don't have anything big to go get with it yet. But... Um, Let's see, I don't think we've seen Progenitus. I believe Terastodon's gone. I don't think we've seen Primus. Uh, Atarka's gone. We haven't seen what? We haven't seen Primetime. We haven't seen Avenger of Zendikar, question mark. We haven't seen... I mean, there's still plenty enough time in this draft. We have, you know, basically the entirety of Pack 3 to make this good. So we'll take the natural order and just hope that we can find a... Uh, a pretty busted card. Ooh, now this is kind of a tough pick because I think Strip Mine's very, very good, but Mystical Tutor for Channel, for Natural Order, just seems way too good to pass up. So let's take that. And number one priority, I guess, right now is just finding a creature to, to get with Natural Order. Because, yeah. Let's see, we have four one-drop green creatures. Sylvan Caryatid. 
Yeah, so we have enough early game creatures right now to, to support the natural order. Got a Renin 6 here. Have a Green Sun sneak attack in the pack as well. Hmm. Sneak attack is another decent card. How badly do I need this Green Sun, I guess, is the question. Because right now, Green Sun really is only getting cast for like one or two just to get a Mana Dork out. So the Sneak Attack, I think, has the highest potential. I do have a Copper Line Gorge in my sideboard as well. Um, we have like one Annihilator creature, Exile 20 creature, 13 damage creature, as well as the possibility of like wheeling the Kozilek. So I think I'm going to take the Sneak Attack just on the random upside. On the potential. Okay, well, similar to last draft, sim similar to last week, if you guys caught that one, we could pick up the Bane Fire to go along with the channel. I guess I'm going to do it over Garrick, which is not necessary. Um, Shardless Agent or Nature's Claim. Shardless Agent could hit some weird cards though and i do have like the finale so it might not be ideal here nature's claim is generally good enough yeah we'll take that okay this is pick seven so doesn't look like i'm actually going to pick up the uh the natural order target that's too bad i think it was still a correct pick it kept me very open um but it looks like it's not going to get there Steam Vents is also an interesting consideration because I do have the Misty Rainforest and it opens up Sneak Attack and Bane Fire potential. So, as much as I love Plow Under, as kind of busted as I think it is, this could be a Steam Vents. Steam Vents allows me to play Sneak Attack, Bane Fire, and that does seem pretty juicy. All right, let's go for it. Okay, nothing here for us. Sideboard Frixian Revoker is a fine card. We did wheel the codes like, oh, but the Gruel Signet in the pack too. Oh, that's so gross. Gruel Signet's like the perfect Signet. Okay, so how badly, I guess, do I need the Kozilek now? What other fixing? So I have Mox Diamond, Birds of Paradise, Sylvan Carry added, Kadama's Reach for fixing. Oh man, this is a really tough pick. Kozilek or Gruel Signet? So hard. Ah, oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to go with the good mana. I think I have enough top end that uh, I really regret passing this. Boros Signet possibility. Uh, I think we can probably cut the Sword of Feast and Famine. Sideboard Ooze for Reanimator. There's a Rend in 6 too, but that doesn't really do too much in our deck. We only just have the Misty Rainforest, really. I didn't take that Strip Mine. Man, we did wield the Kozilek. That's just crazy. But Sneak Attack's pulling me in, and it's just too good. Okay, Bonfire Sideboard versus Burst Lightning. Bonfire's pretty cute with uh, both Mystical Tutor and uh, Channel. I don't know if we're going to run it, but... Okay, so I think we have a pretty solid deck overall. Uh, did not get as much fixing in lands as I would want, but we do have some good fixing otherwise in the form of our creatures. So now the question is, do I want to run 16 lands here? Or shave something and run 17. I can probably just cut the GTA too. I'm cutting the sword. Let's cut the GTA. Let's run 17 lands. And let's hope to uh, channel out some people or sneak attack out some people. And let's go. Two islands, two mountains, ten forests. Does that look good to me? That gives me three. One, two, three, four blue lands. One, two, three, four. Red lands, 10, 11, 12 green lands. Then we have Gruel Signet, Mox Diamond. All right, that looks good. Very, very similar to uh, last week's deck, but let's go. See how round one plays out. Okay, here we are for round one of this Vintage Cube draft with our, well, I'm not going to say deck that we've repeated multiple times, but it's basically Teamer Channel Sneak Attack. <laughs> uh, our opening hand is decent, although not amazing. Uh, we do have turn one Arbor Elf. Misty Rainforest can go get Steam Vents for our red source. 
but um, hand is a little bit cold to say a removal on the Arbor Elf or just me breaking on a few draw steps. Okay, now we really want to draw channel. Opponent playing Grixis over there. Orzov Signet their first play. Okay, so we're only going to attack for one and pass. And uh, the hope here is that, again, they don't do anything super relevant and I just get to resolve sneak attack next turn. Karn is fine. And, ooh. Um, I guess I give him Treachery as... The treachery on just my Arbor Elf doesn't really do all that much. Clear the steam in there. Play out. Sneak attack. Hope they don't have a counter and hope they don't have a way to kill that. Come on, sneaky, sneaky. Ooh, Demonic Tutor. Okay. We'll see what they end up getting here. Could be some hand interaction, maybe. A way to discard, perhaps, or... Although, if they make me discard, they only make me discard one of my fatties. So that's not all that bad. And in a few turns, we can always, like, Primal Command. Um... Say, one of my Annihilator. I guess I only have one other Annihilator. Or one other Eldrazi, the other Ulamog. Not really sure what the opponent's on, though. They could be Storm. They're in the right Storm colors. Karn, though, is a little bit of a curveball, if that's the plan. Okay. What did they tutor for? Oh, maybe the reanimator. Aha. I um, guess we give them the season pyromancer because that's irrelevant. So they can play the seasoned here. If they play seasoned pyromancer and do discard two cards, draw two cards, they're only going to have 20 cards left in their deck. Sorry, 24 cards left in their deck, and Ulamog exiling would be pretty spicy. Okay, so they just passed. Um, well, let's go to combat. Let's sneak attack. Emrakul and Ulamog go to combat. Yeah, good enough, I guess. 23 hasty damage. So, we saw both, what, Signet and Mox Emerald, so I could see bringing in the Nature's Claim. Uh, we saw Iona. Iona. And they're playing Grixis. So they could be on Show and Tell. Um, but I'm going to guess that they have some Reanimate, so Scavenging Ooze is probably something I want to bring in. So we can bring in, like, the Scoos and, say, the Nature's Claim. Now the question is, what two cuts do I make? Now I could shave a land if I wanted to get a little bit aggressive on the draw. I think that's probably okay. And then, honestly, maybe Basalt Monolith. This was an early pickup, but it doesn't actually all help that much unless I'm physically hard casting these. Or maybe not physically, but actually hard casting these, right? And in a deck that has channel and sneak attack, um, that just doesn't seem necessary, I guess. So... Let's shave a land, let's shave, shave the monolith, let's bring in the ooze, let's bring in the claim, and uh, go to game two. Okay, we got turn one bird, turn two oko. Certainly can't mulligan that. It's not busted um, <laughs> as far as Vintage Cube is concerned, but it's certainly very, very good. Man, what is this, modern or pioneer? Turn one... Mandadork, turn to Oko. 
hopefully they don't, they don't have a way to just kill my bird here. Maybe a signet from them. Oh, a sapphire. Wow, they have sapphire and emerald. Nice. So what I actually like doing here is elkifying their sapphire and taking them off blue. Next turn I can make a food token. Oh, they have their emerald too. Next turn I can make a food token, and then uh, the turn after that I can make my food token an elk to block the sapphire. That's pretty funny. No plays again, though, from the opponent. So let's go make a food. Let's go Signet. Uh, land. Ooze. And then on there... Actually, I guess there's no point in waiting. We'd rather just Nature's Claim the Emerald right now. If they had blue mana, it would make sense to wait, but... All right, Sapphire attacking the Oko once again. Yes, Oko goes down to one, and they pass. All right, so they're just getting a bit mana screwed as well. Let's make our food a 3-3. Three, three. Arbor Elf, Steam Vents. Attack with our Scavenging Ooze, and pass. Did you guys know that Oko is a good card? Stupid even, some might say. Uh, yeah, let's just keep making elks and uh, try to clock the opponent as fast as we can now. <laughs> they're at 19 though, so it's going to take a little while, but they're also getting mana screwed. Well, maybe not. I don't want to say they were getting mana screwed. I guess I screwed their mana by killing two of their moxes, and they scooped. GG's. Let's go to the next. Alrighty, here's round two of the Vintage Cube. And we're on the draw, but we do have a potential turn two Oko again, so... Probably can't mulligan this hand. Um, hell, if we draw, like, Channel off the top, we get to Ulamog on turn two, which would also be pretty good. Good luck, have fun. Don't mind me, just gonna Oko turn two and hopefully sneak attack turn three. I suppose I shouldn't get my hopes up though when the opponent has access to that open blue manas. But certainly just going to jam, because if they counter Oko, then Sneak Attack hopefully can uh, get through no problem. But looks like they didn't have the counter. And turn two Oko is a go. What was... Uh... What was the best Planeswalker that they've printed it so far? Or what is the best Planeswalker, I guess? People have been making the argument for Oko, and uh, kind of hard to disagree with them there. As our opponent plays a Black Lotus, of all things. Oh boy, here we go. So what am I going to lose to? Like a, a Bribery? No, 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 never mind. I don't lose to Bribery. Oko can turn something into an Elk. Um, they could be on Storm. We have no idea what's going on there. Oh, they are on Storm. High Tide. Okay. Is this going to be a turn three kill from the opponents? We will find out momentarily. So they have access to two, four, seven mana right now. Okay. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Three cards left in hand. Are they going to play Thousand Year Storm here? Desperate Ritual. Two cards left in hand. This is four spells this turn. Ah, Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so there goes my sneak attack. And I'm left with a bunch of junk. Mox Diamond of their own. Oh boy. What do we get from the sideboard versus them? Frixian Revoker. Yeah, we can turn off some things. Hey, Dak. They can steal my mocks or steal my food. No, they're going to loot. Okay. So that's spell number seven. Um, I have the other Ulamog in my deck, so they can't brain freeze me out. So I guess we're hoping that they go for a brain freeze here. Gush, all right, they're continuing to dig. That's eight spells. So now if they have tendrils, they just need to cast like a cantrip, a one blue mana cantrip here. Oh, or they just fizzled. <laughs> LOL, oh well, has been called. Power stone into pass. I would be A-OK -okay with that. <laughs> well... We could have died this turn. Fortunately, we didn't. Uh, so let's... This is an interesting turn. I I kind of want to elk the Power Stone. To take them off two mana. And then play Trigon to start killing stuff. To, to kill like their Mox Diamond. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Trigon here. Pilgrim. And then I'm going to Elk the uh, Power Stone instead of attacking Dak with the uh, food. I think versus Storm, taking them off mana is just way too good. And now if they don't kill my Trigon Predator, it attacks and kills their Mox Diamond. So yeah, they're just looting. Because... I mean, they could still kill me here. Like, if they have um, Yagmas Will in their deck, Yagmas Will with Lotus, Ritual, and whatnot in their graveyard is already pretty, pretty good. Okay, just a Signet. That's fine. So, currently my game plan is to kill the Mox Diamond and Primal Command their Signet. Nope, Mizium Mortars. Okay, that takes care of my Trigon. Yes, Oko is going to take three damage here. Kadama's Reach. Uh, so, they have two more basic islands in their hand, though, right? No, they pitched them. Never mind. No longer in their hand. Yeah, I think I'm going to start pressuring the Oko. I have access to six mana here, so like I could Thirst first, and then Kadama's Reach, depending on what I see. But I think I want to just Primal Command this turn. And uh, set them back a teeny bit. So let's attack Dak. I could also shuffle their Graveyard. You know what? That might actually be better, too, as it makes Yagmas Will a lot less potent. I think I'm actually going to do that, right? Because what other creatures do I have to go get? Slime. Slime's good. Actually, Ulamog would also not be terrible, but I'm going to play it safe. Actually, I can shuffle away the Mox Diamond, too, can I? Yeah, let's do that. Let's put this back on top of their library and shuffle their graveyard in. Okay, 
they go up ticking again. Discard two land. Four cards left. Let's see if they even attack the DAC or the Oko now. They do, okay. Firebolt to finish off the Oko. Not bad. All right, so they have a lot of uh, random burn in their deck, it seems. Ooh, there's the channel. So I want to th thirst for knowledge here first. See if we can hit one of our Eldrazi. We don't. Yikes. Discard, discard. Play the land. Um, attack the Oko. Oh, sorry, attack the Dak. <laughs> Make sure it's dead. And then let's go Kadama's Reach into Arbor Elf. And set up for Harmonize into Channel, hopefully. All right, sorry about that jump. Uh, so pass the turn to the opponent. They attack with a Worn Power Stone. I didn't see, did they play a land? They did play a Swamp. And flashback Firebolt to kill the Pilgrim. That's fine. And there's the Ulamog. Okay, so we want to start off with a Harmonize here first. Find out what else we could potentially channel into. And that should be the game. Attack them with the food and the elf, and then we channel Banefire. Easy peasy. What are you at? 16? How about a Bane Fire for 16, friend? All right. <laughs> there she goes. All right. So versus Storm. Let's bring in Ooze. Let's bring in Revoker. Sword is interesting. Uh, Nature's Claim. Shave a land like I have been. Uh, shave the Basalty. Let's see. Jite is almost interesting as well. But I don't think so. Uh, so Ooze, Revoker, Claim, Cut, what? Hmm. I'm not sure what the last cut is supposed to be. It could just be Primal Command. That does seem fine. All right, let's try it like this. All right, here is game number two of the second round versus Storm. We are up a game. I have a moderately decent hand. I don't have a blue source yet for Mr. Kill Tutor beside the Sylvan Carry added, which means I don't get to go tutoring for channel until turn three. But this is definitely a keep. Um, I mean, mind slavering uh, a storm player often just kills them outright. So hopefully they don't they don't do anything before turn three. Nothing too relevant anyway. Pretty funny arbor elf with copper line gorge doesn't work. We almost have a turn uh, turn to Oko again. Kind of funny. So yeah, next turn I go carry added, pass. Then the turn after that, upkeep, tutor, channel, Emrakul. 
Hopefully the opponent is just playing like a Signet here, but then doesn't do anything too scary the following turn. All right, what are they choosing? Are they debating whether or not to pay two life with the grave or not? Oh, I see, okay. So they're just having some internet issues. I was gonna say, either you do have something for two mana that you wanna cast or you don't, right? <laughs> no, we'll just pause while the opponent's lagging out. All right, so it was indeed Pay two life for the uh, Water Grave untapped and then Rakdos Signet. So our game plan of Sylvan Carry added attack for one still in order. And uh, hope that the opponent doesn't have a uh, crazy turn three. Although we know that they have like Black Lotus and a bunch of rituals and Wheel of Fortune and stuff in their deck, so... Not too crazy to think that we might be dead next turn. The good news is, is I don't have the uh, original Ulamog in my hand, so if they do go for a kill with like Brain Freeze, we're probably okay. All right, looks like our opponent's still having some internet issues. <clears throat> But what might have been five minutes for me was only a couple seconds for you guys. Through the power of the com computer. Yeah, that's it. The power of the computer. We'll go with that. Okay. So we're still hoping for no whammies here. Time walk. Are they just doing that as an explore? Okay, just an explore. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Let me go for Mystical Tutor and Emrakul. All right, step one, they pass the turn. Step two, Mystical Tutor on upkeep. Step three, select channel. Step four, draw the channel. Cast the channel. Will it resolve? Channel resolved. I think... Let's see, if I hit him down to 15, then the next attack doesn't kill them anyways. Also, I can Oko next turn and attack with Oko'd Elf. So yeah, let's just preserve as much life as we can, just in case. And cast that. Emrakul. I would love to take your next turn, please. I would love to wreck your hand and everything that's in it. GG's. All right. Well, good enough. Scoop to that. As I said, Mind Slaver effects, just wreck Storm decks. And we are a very quick 2 0 -0. Let's see if we can convert to another trophy with this uh, pretty nice deck. The third and final round of this Vintage Cube. On the draw with a good mana hand, but pretty awful otherwise. Uh, we're going to mulligan down to six. We can just do so many more broken things. And I think turn one Emrakul probably qualifies. Good luck. Have fun, he said, as he ruined his opponent. Um, let's get rid of the Predator. So we're going to go turn one Mox Diamond, Pitch the Island, Forest, Channel, Emrakul. Turn 1, 13, 13 is not bad. Uh, would be much better to have, say, Ulamog here to exile two permanents, but <laughs> not going to complain. Forest Mox Ruby from the opponent. And what do you have? Green Sun for one. Okay. Not bad. OP, not bad. Oh god, draw the Ulamog off the top. Darn. So, Mox Diamond. Pitch Island. Channel. Let's 
and I will Emra cool you. And they conceded. All right. Well, <laughs> so I think I saw Ulamog, Woodfall Primus. Uh, I couldn't tell what quite else, but <laughs> uh, we're going to bring in the Frixian Revoker to turn off their mana dorks and whatnot. And on the draw, I'm going to cut another land. Was that fun? Did you all have fun? Uh, Garrick is usually pretty good versus opposing green decks as well, as you can just eat their mana. So I'm going to kill, or rather sideboard out the monolith once more and then just run the Garrick. <laughs> uh, turn one, channel, Emrakul. Not the good Emrakul, but an Emrakul. And yeah, there's no way I can mulligan this hand. It is slow, but it already has a castable channel and uh, a way to dig. So, seems good to me. So let's keep this. Hoping We're hoping that the opponent doesn't have um, too fast of a start. As they mulligan to six, okay. Turn one Elvish Mystic, fine. So we're going to lead with Forest, and then if we don't draw something to channel into next turn, we'll play the Steam Vents. Hmm. Turn 2 Courser land. That's pretty good. All right. Let's draw an Eldrazi here. Please. No. Steam Vents pass. Okay, they have five mana now on turn three. Play the island off the top. Karn in hand. So if they have another way to make mana this turn, we're going to have a problem. Because then they might have Karn next turn. So maybe instead of thirsting for knowledge, I guess it depends on what they do. Oh yeah, they have Karn next turn. Okay, so either Rip and Eldrazi this turn would be great, or hmm. I mean, I'm going to take three, four, five, six damage too, so the channel's not even all that good. I guess I go with Trigon Predator. The hope here is that Karn exiles on Trigon Predator, but I'm like I'm still taking six damage, so I think this game is pretty much over. So they have Avenger in their hand as well as Karn. Okay, Karn. Oh, they ate my steam vents. Okay, that's not as bad, I guess. I do take three here from the beast. Hmm. Yeah, but I think that's pretty good to scoop. They have Avenger next turn. I can, like, kill their Courser with Trigon Predator, but I don't have anything to do. All right, go to game three. Very fast games. Very fast indeed. I still don't think the sort of fa feast and famine is good enough. I'm wondering if Ren and Six is good to just ping their dude since I'm on the play, but no. I think we sip, uh, ship it back and hope that we have the broken start again. On the play, game three of the finals. This hand is great. Uh, I have keep here. I think this is a turn two win. I go Copperline Gorge, Elvish Mystic, Mox Diamond Pitching Steam Vents. Yeah, this is a turn two. Turn two actual kill. Because now I mo uh, Mystical Tutor for Channel, and then Channel Finale. This is turn two kill. This was insane. Holy moly. Wow. 
Now you can't do this unless you have four green with channel and finale. We can go get Ulamog, make them have zero permanence, hit them for 25 damage or whatever. <laughs> Turn to kill, ladies and gentlemen. Holy crap. Yeah. Basically the best possible start I could have had. I mean, we of course we can turn one channel in this deck as well, but turn two actually killing, attacking you with a 24-24. Indestructible haste, Annihilator 4, on the play. Like what? The perfect victory, I would say. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, a 3-0. I think we've had three weeks in a row of green decks just completely smashing on our opponents. Uh, I believe all of them with the card channel. So, lesson learned. Don't pass me this card, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed. We'll see you guys next time.